And there's so many great jobs out there for blue collar people to create a market for themselves where there's a lot of money in it. You have a shot life if you're willing to go to work. purposes only. You'd be an idiot to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. And welcome to Cash Daddies, where banking fatties. So many fatties. Join me as always from wherever frosted place he's at. Johnny Woodard, and of course, the man, the myth, the legend, to know him is to love him. How we do we? Bum, 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 bum. How are you guys? Good. Good, Good man. Good. Good, man. Finally, finally drying out here in L.A. The sun's finally out for the first Dude, time in about five days. Let me, let me tell you, there's nothing better than a, uh, a, a day in L.A. the day after a rain. It is so nice out. The air is crisp. The, you know, the trees are green. It's great. It's a blessing. You guys have gotten that much rain. It's like crazy. It is crazy. What's going on with you? Yeah, in the New streets York? are all. The, by, by the way, the, sorry, sorry, real quick. The streets. Have you noticed all the potholes that have just popped up? Because oh yeah, the under the under the water runs under the street and kind of hollows it out with the erosion, and there are pot, huge potholes everywhere on the streets, the side streets. Yeah. It's ridiculous and crazy. offensive. And oh, here in, here in New York, it's like sixty degrees every day. It's nice and warm. We got that global warming. It's nice. It's nice. The Giants won. I'm not a Giant fan, but I'm rooting them on. What can you do? It's been a good weekend. Good week, too. I mean, crazy week. Crazy, yeah. crazy week. Howie, did you hear about the guy that bet $1.4 million on the Chargers winning when they were up 27 nothing to win eleven grand? Yeah, I'm going and to his. Fu- I'm going to his funeral next week. <laughs> he offed himself. First of all, we talked about this with with Ta- and and it's like this. Look, that's not the team to bet. You team you you bet the team that's plus fourteen hundred, not minus fourteen. This dude bet what, and you know how much he was going to win. If it won, he was going to make eleven grand off of the bat. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Eleven grand off of one point four million, and what happened? The Jacksonville Jaguars came back and did him in. I mean, I that- love that guy, and now everybody in conspiracy world is like, "Oh my god!" Because Lawrence goes, "You couldn't script it any better." Ah, see, it's all scripted. Ah, I'm like, dude, come on, it's a saying, you dumbasses. Yeah, I'm dude. If, if this if this was scripted, Tom Brady's still playing right now. Let's be honest. If if this thing so was there, scripted, listen, dude. We've seen times where like the big market gets a call that maybe they wouldn't normally get that helps them kind of ride. Very rarely do you see the smaller market get the call, so the bigger market goes home, right? Like they would totally want the Chargers to win if they wanted if this thing was rigged. Jacksonville's a tiny ass market. Nobody cares about it. Yeah. So I mean, well, you remember the Lakers versus the Kings where it's like they're just every call every two seconds? Or when Kobe Bryant and the Lakers came back out of the Boston Celtics and yeah. the Lakers shot like 30 foul shots and the Boston Celtics shot like 10. Like, okay, that that is obvious. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, this is that's just ridiculous. No, man, he he uh that quarterback Trevor Lawrence that he should be a jet. That kid is gonna be the he's the I think he's the next great one, man. The kid threw oh, four interceptions. In I think field. all these young guys in the AFC are gonna be great yeah, ones. The good quarterbacks, all yeah. of them. Did you guys see this one? Look, man, I'm start. You want to talk about conspiracies? I don't know. Is this? No, we love of- it. Is this time that we're living in right now, is it, are we seeing more, uh, more Ponzi scheme kings that are just ripping people off at a higher rate than anywhere time in history? Or is it just because it's always on the internet and you see it? 
because That's great. Uh, maybe the yeah, go on with what you're gonna say. Oh, because there's this dude in Washington. I read about it. I thought it was Sam. I swear to God, it said they caught a guy in the woods, and the guy <laughs> had twelve thousand dollars in gold bars. He had sixty grand in U.S. currency and ten thousand dollars in Mexican pesos. <laughs> I'm reading it, and I'm like, "Fuck, is that Sam?" And no, no, it's it's some guy, Justin Costello. He he basically Ponzi thirty five million dollars from investors, and this dude takes the cake. This dude said he goes, you know, I got an MBA from Harvard, never went to college. Uh, I did two tours in Iraq and the special forces. Never, <laughs> never was in the military. This dude just went hardcore, making shit up. Like I thought the politician, that dude Santos from New York, he was my favorite. Because that that Republican politician that came out and said, "Well, I'm a Jew," his name's Santos. Like, does do these people know that we can go on the internet? We can find out if you went to Harvard. We can find out this shit. It's on the internet. That's like me saying, "Howie, you played college basketball?" Yeah, I don't know if you remember me. Uh we went to the the final sixteen when I was at Syracuse. I averaged seventeen a game. Yeah, we had a couple of good years. You know, I played with Derek Coleman when he was a senior. I was a sophomore. Um, it, it, dude, you can look this shit up. You can't. Just- Wasn't there a uh, football coach who got the Notre Dame job, and it turned out he didn't go to these schools and never coached at these schools, and he didn't get the job. And well, that was for something. It was his little. education. Yeah, it was his education. He lied about George. Yeah. Uh, Fuck, what was his name? Not Weaver. Hold George. on. I, I, I can remember. Uh, yeah, Irish fuck, Irish. George O'Leary. George O'Leary. George O'Leary. So, yeah, but his wasn't even bad. George O'Leary. I just think he didn't that? graduate, right? He lied no. that he graduated, right? Wasn't it? No, he said he was a captain. He said he was a captain at University of New Hampshire's football team. Okay, he here it is. Right, I, I'll read it exactly. You're right. You're right, Howie. For for two decades, O'Leary, 55, formerly the coach at Georgia Tech, where he did a great job, exaggerated his accomplishments as a football player at the oh. University of New Hampshire and falsely oh. claimed to have earned a master's degree in education from NYU. So those were his two misstatements. Well, that's what he did. And he took the Notre Dame job. They hired him. Then they fired him when they found out he wasn't honest. And it's like that was 20 years ago. These what these dudes are lying about today, it's like, you know, I didn't go to Cortland. I went to Yale. I don't know if you guys knew this. I got a doctor from Yale. Yeah, uh, I was actually an oncologist, but, you know, <laughs> cancer wasn't for me. So, you know, I went to teaching for a little bit. You know, I thought, you know, 10th, fifth grade kids would be fun. Um, Dude, but- I knew this was going to fucking happen. I got to 100,000 on Instagram. I said, thank you very much. Somebody purposely unfollowed me. So I'm back down to 9, 99.9. Only you would blame it on somebody doing that on purpose. Like, what if, you know, what if it's just like a bot that got narked or something like that? Oh, my God. Story of my fucking life. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Story of my fucking life we'll bust through again and it's okay we'll, we'll get back to recording the podcast after sam uh, is done sulking about his social media account no we're recording it it's part of my business johnny is oh, okay. we're no. your business it's a good point sam but no i just i'm seeing like new scams on a daily like how the fuck is it easier to scam people to this is how dumb americans are getting because i mean if if I asked you, Johnny, listen, man, I got a good thing going over here at Cash Daddies. You know, I'm I'm doing uh, 75% a year for my clients. Uh, we're tripling our money, you know, every six months. Um, I'd like to get you in. It's it's only a hundred thousand dollar minimum. Um, I'd love to get you in. We have room for three more. I mean, this is what these fucking guys do. I mean, wouldn't you at least look me up? Yeah. Of course. I, I mean, yeah. let's see how many people. <laughs> fucked in the past like i just it blows my mind how these guys this kid he embezzled 35 million from clients and dude the guy people were like yeah he went to harvard got an mba special forces did two tours the fucking dude did not like it's like man he i give him credit because his buddies are probably like yeah i don't know man you might want to just say that uh graduate with an economics degree from like state. yeah but i mean like okay okay you want to fudge it a little bit yeah. I remember sylvester sloan got in big trouble because he told young actors to lie on their resume which you totally do okay you lie 
You, but you don't go nuts, right? You don't go so crazy. It's so obvious. And uh, I mean, like, you went to Harvard and your special forces. What are those? <laughs> Ten of those in the world? Ten. This dude, this dude was like, you know what? If I'm going to do this, I'm doing it right. Yeah, I, I was a jet fighter pilot. I'm yeah. in the moon. Uh, karate. Yeah, karate. I used to be married to uh, Giselle before Tom. Nobody knows about that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's like, I, I don't even know. That's when you're well, in the Howie, back. You know, like, you know, who, who, who regulates Wall Street? It's the uh, SEC. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like they always catch these young guys because these young guys think they came up with a new scheme that nobody's ever seen before. They don't realize that people have been running that forever and they know what they're looking for. So they get busted all the time. So these young guys come in and they think they're running a game on motherfuckers. In reality, they ain't running shit. No, these schemes have been around since the 1800s. But my point, Sam, is, okay, before the internet, I would have thought it would have been real easy to run these things for the internet. I can tell people, Hey man, I, not, I don't know if you know this. I got an MBA from Cornell, Yale and Harvard. I played in the NFL for three years, <laughs> um, but I developed a good jump shot. So I went and played for the Knicks for four. I mean, like you back before the internet, you could make some of this shit up, but now you can check everybody. Yeah. So, it's My ridiculous. thing is how these people are stupid people. And when I see these American greed episodes and it's like, we gave our whole 330,000, you know, I don't feel bad for you. You're stupid, man. I mean, that's what we always talk about on the Patreon. Fucking allocate your assets, diversify, have three different brokers, get a lot of different advice, man, so that you don't end up getting screwed when you have a couple million dollars at age 60. And that's what it is. You got to be careful, man. There's there's just like more dirtbags out there I've ever seen. I don't know why. Maybe the sentencing is much less now, so they're not afraid. I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin way up over the past yeah. week. It was at, what, 16 probably about the time we ended our last podcast. And now it's up over 21, 21.5, something like that. Yeah, it's up over 21. I mean, and pretty much all crypto that's still breathing has jumped about the same. I think it's great. We'll see what happens. And, you know, again, there's a lot of worry about Tether. Does this bring everybody in again to get excited? And then they just pull the rug on that as well. So we'll see what happens, man. I mean, I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, you had people talking about Bitcoin going under under 10. So yeah. the fact that going back up to me is pretty sweet. And uh, we'll see what happens. I also yeah. think it, if it keeps going up, it could mean good news for Celsius. Uh, some of us getting our money back. But also, it's funny, right after crypto took this big jump, there's this headline, FTX finds $5.5 billion in liquid assets. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That Oh, the crypto just took this big jump. And they're like, yeah. wow, we found $5.5 billion. Oh, I guarantee you, bro, everyone's come together that's connected to this thing to bail this dude out. So... It's it's a way less of a hit, and and because everyone's like, who's this guy connected to? And all this DNC shit's coming out, and it's like you got his partners rolling on her on him, and they're still like, yeah, you can go home and hang out. We just need two hundred million dollars as a down payment, and that's I, not even it, right? He had to give like what twenty mil or something like that at the end, which yeah. I think his parents have that under under in their couch somewhere. <laughs> I, I think this dude is going to do – I think they'll give him 15 years and he'll get out in seven on good behavior. I think it's going to be nah, something. Dog. Like He's going to get 10 at the most and he'll do three at the most. Maybe. I'm telling really? you, bro. I don't think he's going to do that. Like, he's so connected, bro. Yeah, it sucks. And that the sucks. reason Bernie Madoff is rotting in hell right yeah. now or in jail because he ripped off rich people. Like – this guy took money, of course. Bernie's dead. Took money and then gave it to all these rich people, right? Like, turn around, gave it to the DNC. Now, people like Tom Brady lost a lot of money, but I guarantee you, if they find a lot of money, Tom Brady, all these guys are going to get taken care of before people like you and me are. 
Well, yeah, that's that's kind of the way it goes. That's the way it goes. That's just the way it is. Bernie Madoff, they actually, believe it or not, if you look back at his, his was $64 billion. If you look back, they recovered most of those funds. They recovered most of them. Um, I want to say something like maybe 75, 80%. I could be wrong. But they did recover a ton of those funds. This is going to be interesting with these kids because they're finding money and funds all over the place. I think it's so public and so many big people have gotten screwed. I, I think this guy's going to do some time. I think he's going to do some time. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, yeah, like, we'll see. I'm not, I'm everybody not, everybody wants more regulation. It's like crazy, you know, we get into it with our guests and a few, but yeah, man, it's a crazy week. Um, I don't know, man. I'm going to buy a little more gold soon. Store it. Why don't you buy what we're buying on the Patreon? Because we had our second double of the new year. We we Patreon.com slash Cash Daddies. Uh, Howie Dewey dropping Hammer of the God. Bah, 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 bah. And you then to- uh, Johnny and I will watch you and your lady make love. And if you... If you and a twink are gonna go at it, Johnny says he'll 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 do it. So Johnny, you know what? Did you, did you buy any crowdsource? No, I missed it. I didn't get in the right time on that one. No, I, I was at away that day, so I missed it. Yeah, that's one, Sam. Two weeks ago, we bought these calls around ninety-two, and I mean, guys were selling these calls up a hundred percent today. Um, and we're sitting back in cash, waiting for a little correction coming, baby. That's what we want. We want a nice dip. How oh, you're fucking fire. Yeah, we want things to sell off. Yep. I've just, you know what? I've been doing my cash. I've just been dropping it into Bitcoin and letting it ride. And then when I want to make a stock move, I just cash out of Bitcoin, you know, a little. And it's been working pretty well over the past year, I would Nothing say. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Especially with the nice little, you know, it's, I think Bitcoin is up 25% in the last week. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That was nice That's to see. Like. Yeah, so yeah, uh, it was a good week. Tomorrow, First, did you guys see uh oh what was hold on, where's my story here? Oh yeah, um so Elon Musk apparently has this uh this huge payment that he's gonna owe here on the Twitter deal. Yeah. An installment of interest payments related to, you know, 13 billion in debt that he used to fund the takeover. <laughs> uh, they're going to have to pay one point five billion dollars in annual interest payments. And that's about to come due. And they're saying this could actually put a little squeeze on the on the man himself. What do you what do you do? You buy that? Is he really in? Because uh, they're, they're they're describing Twitter's finances as dire in this uh, Financial Times article Doesn't saying it he- lost two hundred and twenty one million dollars in twenty twenty one. That's he that's- lost two hundred and twenty mil. Twitter yeah. did. Twitter did. Lost $220 million. In I'm just going to tell you something. If you go, Sam, what's your favorite app? It's Twitter. I like Instagram because all the buttholes, okay? But outside of that, Instagram is the best. It is the most free. You can say anything on there now, and they don't. I, I don't know why. I get it, man, because all these people, it's this fake kind of thing that, it's just this circle jerk of mega corporations all just circle jerking each, each other. It's like when the when the uh, women's soccer uh, team is like, we made more money than the uh, male team. You're like, yeah, because you had corporate sponsors coming in here and artificially uh, inflating your numbers to make it look like you're making more money. Nobody gives a fuck. Same thing. So all these all these people pulled their money out. And he should go. He should go public again. Just go public again. Let everyone reinvest. And have this influx of cash coming in. Why does that work though? Because I mean, they've got would the would the would Twitter be valuable though if they went public again? Because now they have this thirteen. The debt is actually held by the company. It's not. I mean, the thirteen billion they're talking about in this article is the, the by, held by Twitter. So Twitter yeah, actually not, owes not these just, payments. It's not held by. I I thought that Johnny. I thought that. Much of his debt was held by Goldman Sachs. Well, here, so here, here it is. I'll, I'll just give you, I'll read it. I'll take it straight he's got from a line Financial of Times. He's got a line okay. of Three people close to the entrepreneur's buyout of Twitter said the first installment of interest payments related to $13 billion of debt he used to fund the takeover could be due soon. 
they're looking at like the end of January. That debt means the company must pay about $1.5 billion in annual interest payments. The Tesla and SpaceX chief financed his $44 billion deal to take Twitter private in October by securing the huge debt from a syndicate of banks. We know about that. The $13 billion in debt is held by Twitter at the corporate level with no personal guarantee by Musk. And they're losing $221 million a year. You know what that tells you? I mean, I I don't know. that. It sounds like that company's in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that co- Twitter could be gone in a week. Uh, and, and here's the thing, Sam. We, you love it. Everybody loves it. But they make I no love money. it. But they make no money. They make no money. They That's lose. why he's slashing and burning, because he's in desperate to just yeah. turn a profit. Shit, man. Like, Facebook. Bring videos in, dude. Facebook, Fuckerberg, he has billions of dollars in cash. They don't have they don't need any debt. That guy's got cash for the next couple decades to burn. T- this Twitter, they make nothing, man. And they're uh, just- here's the old thing, man. This sounds bad. It's like, you know what they're kind of talking about right now? That you know, the UFC is going through its thing and the, the UFC's rival. Yeah, a lot of people think UFC is the biggest. MMA in the world, it's not. It's actually one FC is much bigger than the UFC, but nobody knows that. Uh, but in the United States, UFC is number one, but a, a ways behind it, but it does have name recognition is Bellator. And Bellator is up for sale. And if I was somebody with some deep pockets, I would go in there and just start paying fighters, man. Make a deal with Fox. That's what blew up the UFC. Made a deal with Fox. And just get it going, bro. So that long story short here, Twitter is like if someone has some pockets, Twitter as the name brand to get it going because its user rate is higher than ever. So we're in this place where we're doing corporations pushing this woke agenda, not want to do business with Twitter, but the people loving Twitter more than ever. Its usage rate is up. So We'll see what happens, man. I think if he can somehow figure out how to put videos on there. It's going to require could, investment, though. That's going to require more money. Go talk to some people. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of loans out with these big investment banks. Uh, Johnny, I mean, doesn't he have a – I think he's got a big-ass line of credit with either Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley. Well, he's got, he's got he's got multiple banks, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, Barclays, and Mitsubishi, which I didn't even know how to bank. Yeah, that's a huge one. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, he's paying them a nut every month or every quarter. Banks on um, every continent. So, at some point here, I'm sure he's got to sit down and say, guys, man, we how do we become profitable? How long is it going to take? Five years, 10 years, 15. Is this worth even doing? Can we sell this company? Might have Don't done that paid. before you paid $44 billion for the day. Yeah, I think you made a big mistake, and I said that before. Um, I just – I never understood the buy. Uh, it, it like <laughs> well, the Twitter issue. files and him telling the World Economic Forum to go fuck themselves probably isn't helping his cause right now. Which is a shame because it really sh- – I mean, I you know. As far as the people are concerned, from it's our great. point of view, yeah, from his their point of view, go fuck yourself. What if this was just done, Sam, just to get that information out of there, and 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 then because really, if the debt is the company's, and you know he's not putting himself in too much financial peril, it could have just been a, a a slick way to get in there with that, get that information out, and then you know burn the burn it to the ground. Arson. I'm not against it. It has caused chaos. Sure. Tesla also uh, this week slashed prices to their to their vehicles, uh, MSRPs, which is super interesting to me. Uh, it's going to put a lot of them down now where they're eligible for tax credits. Again, a lot of them were priced out of the tax credits, the seventy five hundred dollar tax credits. Yeah. Uh, you got some consumers who just paid, you know, the original MSRPs for their vehicles that are getting pissed off. But they're what do you, what does that tell you, Sam, uh, Howie, that they're doing that slashing prices? I'll tell you two. It tells you two things. I mean, number one, if you bought a car for eighty five thousand and a week later it's selling for sixty one, you got to be pissed. You got to be look. You got to give me some sort of uh, deposit. I mean, they were pissed off consumers. Second thing, I mean, he's reason he's doing that is because he's trying to be more competitive with the GMs, Fords, uh, every other EV company out there because Teslas, quite frankly, were very high 
What it does, though, is it hurts his own company. It hurts profitability because now you got $20,000 on every car that is not there anymore. And that that is cash that's going back into the company to make the company profitable. So, you know, a lot of analysts are like, eh, now there's a situation because you know, I, I, however many revenue and billion you're going to do uh, this year, that's certainly be cut by quite a bit. So it's a problem. Um, with that being said, the stock bounced off of 105. It's at 131 right now. I I wouldn't buy it here. Um, it's one of the stocks I mentioned in my portfolio that I liked at under 100. It's back to 130. Uh, but, you know, it's not attractive to me. I think there's problems there, too. All right. All right. Well, I think we should get to our guest. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm very excited to have this guest on. He's Zoltan Roberts. He's a good friend, works with the show, has been with us since the beginning, ride or die. And uh, we're excited to talk about his new business. So uh, let's let's go interview Zoltan. All right, guys, we'll tell you about our friends over there at Copy My Crypto and our good friend, James McMahon, everybody. That's right. Guys, we've seen so many people make ridiculous money from crypto. But did you know it's easy for you to do the same? The Copy My Crypto membership site shows you the coins that YouTuber James McMahon personally holds and allows you to copy them. It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest as you simply do as he does. So let me tell you more about James. He runs Crypto with James YouTube channel, which despite heavy censorship, has over 26,000 subscribers. Since March 2020, he's told his viewers to buy 26 crypto coins. Had you put $100 into each, it went on to be worth $123,000. All the 26 coins, his top pick of the year, called Phantom, went up 692 times from what when he said. That's one call. That one call alone has retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is public knowledge. You you can go to YouTube and verify this yourself. If you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then stop what you're doing and head over to copymycrypto.com slash Sam. That's copymycrypto forward slash Sam. That's S-A-M. You'll find the proof of everything we've said, but my listeners get full access for just $1. Once again, that's copymycrypto.com slash Sam. The recession is here, guys. You can suffer like everyone else or choose to thrive. James is the real deal. Go visit the site now. All right, super excited to have this guest. I've been working with him forever, and uh, he's been cash daddy strong since the jump, and uh, we're very excited to have him on to talk about his new business. Please welcome my good friend, Zoltan Roberts. How are you, Zoltan? What's up, Sam? I'm so happy you're here. We've been wanting to do this interview for a very long time, and we finally made it happen. You're super busy, but... We finally got time in your hectic schedule. So how are you, brother? Pretty good. Uh, I'm actually sick as shit today, but, uh, you know, still can't complain. So I'm Dude. here breathing, alive, you know. Everyone's got AIDS right now. Everyone's got AIDS. It's it's really yeah. crazy. Zoltan so, got him in that third vax. Yeah, yeah third exactly. No, so I, I just keep getting the shot. Nothing's yeah. happening. <laughs> it's going to work eventually. Uh, Zoltan. <laughs> You, uh, you, a lot of people know Zotan from a lot of his artwork that he's done on my T-shirts for Tinfoil Hat. A lot of the profile pics of almost all of my uh, uh, podcasts, which are thousands of different podcasts. So he's done a lot of work for me. And we're very excited now because he has decided to start his own business in a very unique market. So Zoltan, tell us a little bit about your business and what made you start it. Yeah, so the business is called Doggy Dude. I'm actually wearing the the t shirt right here. <laughs> and that's you know, a new shirt. Doggy. You didn't get that in fifth grade. What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen, I'm putting on pounds, all right, Howie. So <laughs> right. starting this shirt. By the way, if people didn't know Zoltan bench is like 490 pounds. He squats like 730. 
Really? Yeah, I, I power lift. So He's a power lifter. You know, yeah. It's That's amazing, Zoltan. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like lifting weights and doing all that fun stuff. Yep. But yeah, the company's called Doggy Dude. Um, basically what it is, it's a, it's a pooper scooper service. Uh, I pick up dog shit, you know, <laughs> for people who uh, <laughs> need their uh, dog's poop picked up. Uh, not a glamorous business to say the least, but, um, you know, there's a demand for it, especially being out here in like the suburbs. Everybody and their mother has a dog. They got a house. And, uh, you know, if you do have a dog, uh, you know, it kind of sucks to have to pick up after your your dog. So some people would rather exchange the money to get back the time for picking up dog shit. So now did you just step in a bunch of dog shit and said enough of this already? I got I got to <laughs> my community. Yeah. I mean, listen, when I was living in the city, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty annoying uh, to have shit literally everywhere like no one would pick up their dog shit in the city at all uh, i i i when i see people let their dog shit i roll down my window and i just go are you gonna leave it there are you just gonna yeah. leave it there pick oh, yeah. it up you yeah, leave I've it in the neighborhood people. yeah i've screamed at people in like the lower east side like a crazy person yeah They're like what the fuck are you doing you know and Nothing. They don't even bat an eye. They just dog just keeps shitting. And they keep walking. So it's amazing. Have you ever done this one, Zoltan? Have you ever, when you're walking down the street in New York City, and you got some 22 year old chick on her phone with a little yeah. tiny poodle, and the fucking yep. the the literally the 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 rope is like six feet across, and you ever act like you just didn't see it, and you pick up your pace and just almost decapitate <laughs> the poodle? Because I've done that a couple times. You walk I, in there. Yeah. Arr, and you're like, oh, geez, I'm sorry, but you probably shouldn't walk on the other side of the fucking sidewalk. You know, yeah, what I'm I mean, listen, I never kicked at anybody's dog, but I've definitely yelled at a lot of people. And I've yeah. seen people on their phone dragging their dog while the dog is shitting behind them and just yeah. completely oblivious to the world. So, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, it's crazy. That's but, New York City, man. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I'm glad to have moved out of there and, uh, you know, came into the suburbs and got a little bit of uh, more normal life over here which is nice so no sam it was wild because zonte i called me he said i have an idea let's sit down and let me go over it with you so he's telling me about this this whole idea and it starts off so off the fucking tracks i'm like in my mind i'm like all right you've lost your mind this is uh and then as he finished up like the last 25 percent of it I'm like coming from a guy that had a service business, pressure washing, uh, gutter cleaning houses. It just went off. I'm like, dude, that's genius. That's genius because, you know, you're going to get one house, five, 20, a hundred. And Zoltan, tell us like, you didn't just come up with this. You kind of are modeling this other, other successful businesses, which is what I did. And what are these guys making? Yeah, no, so, totally. So let me it did ask not just quick. come out of this out of nowhere. There are poop, other poop picking up businesses out there. Oh wow! Yeah, this dude. There's like tons of them. Some of them are yeah. are national, like franchises. I mean, like multi million dollar operations. Uh, it's just crazy to to even like think of that. You know, picking up dog poop would be uh, that lucrative. Uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 like all over the country. And uh, when I was looking for some ideas to kind of start a business, um, just something small to make some extra cash on the side, you know, something that would be, you know, kind of tick off a couple of boxes for starting a business. So like, obviously looking for something that was like uh, a low cost, didn't require a ton of skill, you know, or time, uh, obviously low liability, and then something that was scalable, you know, and then just reoccurring revenue. So yeah. like, I found this, and then I saw all these other companies and just kind of people that were either maybe, you know, I wouldn't say like super like business professionals, you know, I mean, it was like, a, it's a mix of people coming into this field from like all different walks of life. But like, I'm looking at some of these people and then the money that they're making, um, I'm just like, holy shit, I could do this. Like, I don't see why I can't do this, especially having some of the skill sets that I, I'm coming in with with like being able to do graphic design and marketing and run like ad campaigns and all this stuff. So I'm like, well, I kind of have a leg up on these people. So it's just me kind of getting in there and, and starting it. 
Uh, and yeah, they make, uh, you know, some of these guys, they make like average, I would say a good medium sized company been around for a couple of years, probably making about a hundred grand as like, I don't know, two people maybe running the business. Uh, Damn. So, yeah. As crazy as like national franchises where they have like, it's all over the country and they just franchise it at a low cost to people. Um, basically like subcontractors or contractors. And then, uh, yeah, they're making like a couple million a year. Just uh, yeah. off of picking up dog poop. Yeah, Sam. There's there's I, I looked it up when I got done talking with Zoltan. There's businesses in Long Island. Yeah, all they do is pick up dog shit, and you got mom and pop businesses doing 20, 30, 40 grand a month. Yeah, right. And I That's mean, to me, amazing. That is well, good money. That's yeah. good living. And this is just an example of like you know everybody wants to do these kind of glamorous things. And, you know, with a high profile, like, let's just say, like, oh, I want to be a YouTuber or a content creator. Or, or And there's so many great jobs out there for blue collar people to create a market for themselves where there's a lot of money in it. And, like, some people may not think it's the most glamorous thing in the world, but I love it that there's a niche out there and you can go fill that demand when some people may not even know there's a man for it. And it's like, yeah. it's like that video when you see Jordan Peterson, like, do we need men? Do we need men? We have to have men. And, it's, and they, they took that video of that guy trying to fix, he's in the hole and he's trying to fix them and cockroaches are running all over. And you're like, dude, our society crumbles. If people like that don't fill needs and like i had a friend of mine who was going through something and she was like she was a manager to all these giant stars forever and she just hit a bad place and like i really loved and respect her because one day she just started cleaning houses and i like you know man you have a shot life if you're willing to go to work put in the work and and, and and do what it takes to make a dollar and feed your family. So I respect everybody who does that. And, you know, people are amazing. All these ch chicks want to date, like, rappers and all these guys. Find a plumber. Find an electrician. Yeah, because they're, your plumber, your average plumber or electrician could buy out your average rapper ten times over. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know this for a fact. Line I, workers, line. I, you, I mean, oh that's a God. great gig. Those guys who work yeah. lines, power lines. Those guys make a mint. But you have your own plumbing business, so you have what Zoltan <laughs> does. You first of all, number one, you write everything off. Like I don't. Let's say your business gross is three hundred thousand a year. You know, after your office, your equipment, paying your employees, your truck. You know, you're claiming seventy, eighty thousand dollars on it. It's saving you a ton in taxes. And the businesses always start, Zoltan has a full-time job. When I started my pressure wash and gutter cleaning business, I had a full-time job. I was stressed out as a motherfucker trading stocks for a huge company. And I literally, I got a truck. I got a big mobile pressure washer. I started doing this on the side. And it got to a point, Sam, where I would be doing a house on a Sunday at 9 a.m. And it would take me an hour and a half to do the whole house, make it look spotless. And I'd charge 225 bucks. The guy would come out and say, um, while you're here, how much for the driveway? And I had a concrete cleaner. I'd say, you know what? I'm here. It'll take me 30 minutes, another hundred bucks. There's 325. So while I'm doing the driveway, a neighbor comes across the street. Hey, what do you charge for that? Uh, where's your house? Right there. Wow, your house looks like it hasn't been done in a while. Um, normally I would charge 450, but if you wanted it done today, I'll do it for 275. I'll, another hundred. There's another 375. This this actually happened. I'm not making this up. So I did this another house. It's like noon. I'm finishing up the house. It's like one o'clock. It's a Sunday. I had plans with the family that day. I had another neighbor come over. How much to do this, dude? I'm not supposed to be here. I gotta go home. I'll do the whole house right now for three hundred and fifty dollars. Drive with another. Dude, I walk back home. I remember my wife at the time was yelling at me because I was four hours late. <laughs> I had eleven $1 hundred dollars in cash. I left the house with nothing. I walked home with eleven $1 hundred dollars in cash from pressure washing three different houses. And that's how it starts. I mean And how much of that went to gambling debts? <laughs> no, I mean, I think I might have went and played a few hands of blackjack, but <laughs> so Zoltan, let's get into that. Um, like 
what what has been the process for you building this business? I know that you know you have a really great day job. We won't get into that, but we'll get into like how is this? Uh, first of all, I want to get into kind of what how is. Then I want to get into some of the things you've learned about starting a business. But how is that working a day job and starting your own business? Because that's the biggest complaint I think people have is like I can't do this. I I'm doing this. I don't have time. It's like it's like this immigrant mentality. I think people yeah. need to have. Can you tell us a little bit about your process. Yeah, well, listen, I'm first generation, so my parents are off the boat. So I definitely have that immigrant mentality to do whatever you need to do to make shit happen. So uh, I think, you know, the good thing is like when you're starting a business, it's your business. So it's your turns. You get to pick and choose what you want to do. So for me, even though I have a very demanding job during the week, you know, I'm blessed to have the weekends off. So what am I doing? I'm picking up people. And doing service on the weekends. And that's it. I'm going to continue to keep on growing that as much as I can on Saturday, Sunday. I mean, does it suck to have to waste, you know, to spend time uh, picking up dog shit on the weekend instead of like, you know, doing something fun? I guess. But in the long term, you know, my goals are bigger uh, than, you know, me personally running this. Eventually, I want to get enough customers to where I can maybe contract this out to somebody else, hire someone you know, and then hit them with a 1099 every year and just manage the business. I mean, that's like kind of my goal with this business is to get enough people together to where I can kind of outsource everything and then just run it from my home and still keep my day job, you know? So I don't, I mean, I guess it depends on what you're starting or what kind of business you're doing, but, you know, you have the option to kind of pick and choose what you want to do. So I don't know how that would really get in the way unless, you know, Maybe, I guess it depends on what you're doing, really. And Sam, yeah. what I was telling Zoltan is, what's going to happen to him? He's going to, on Wednesday night, come home from work, and he's got to go do an estimate. So he's going to go to a house. He's going to give the house an estimate. And some old lady's going to say, hey, while you're here, do you know anybody that replaces fences or fixes fences? Do you know anybody that would clean my house? Do you know anybody that does hedge? Fucking the guy's getting up subcontracting everything. I'm telling you, that's what happens. You you end up kind of starting with one thing, and then you end up instead of one service, you're doing 15. And there's a lot of money in it. A lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping to kind of expand onto other things. I mean, we'll see where it goes. So that's that's like the goal is really to, you know, just take it one step at a time and see where I could go. I mean. Even uh, some of these guys that make a lot of money doing this stuff, they hit uh, contracts with the county, town, parks. And I mean, you know, you don't have to have as much volume then at that point. You could service waste stations. I love that, bro. I you hope know? you do that. Yeah. I hope you start hitting them up and start making that bank, working with the city on that, going to these dog parks. Because, you know, I bring yeah. my kids to the dog park. They love to run around with the dog. But man, they're stepping in dog shit left and right, left yeah. and right. And I think it's great. So when you started this business, what was there anything surprising? What was the hardest part of like getting the ball rolling on a business? Man, I mean, honestly, I think the hardest thing right now is just to get people to realize you exist. You know, yeah. I mean, like for one, uh, I think any new business probably struggles with this when you come out, especially depending on how saturated the market is. You know, just to get out there and get your name out there in front of people to get that first customer uh, definitely has been a challenge. Um, and then the second thing probably would be shit. I guess just, yeah, I mean, really just trying to make something out of nothing, you know? Oh, yeah, it's the marketing is the hardest because I remember I passed out, I was telling Zoltan, I passed out thousands of flyers. And when yeah. I passed out, I would go out at midnight and I would drive my truck in, in populated residential areas, and I would have the window down. It'd be two in the morning, and I had these postcards, and I was just throwing them like frisbees on driveways. I never stopped the truck. I'm just bang, 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 and I'd do it for hours. I mean, it took me like two weeks to get one phone call, and then that one phone call, I showed up, did a good job. I was like, "Listen, man, who else can I help?" You know, I gave it. Hey, call this guy, this guy, and within three months. I had 25 clients within three more months. I had a hundred 
And then once you get word of mouth and you do a good job, it just grows exponentially. It's, you know, that's the service business. Yeah, I took that uh, uh, advice from you, Howie. And, you know, I hit up somebody yesterday, a customer. After I got done with the, doing their yard and cleaning everything up, I had door hangers. And, uh, yeah. you know, I made my rounds around the neighborhood and went to each door and just hung everything. Yeah, you'll get to know everybody, man. I as, mean, as, has social media made it easier for you to get the word out? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's probably the problem is it's so expensive, you know, like, but it's definitely the easiest way to get eyeballs on your potential, you know, on your business to get customers. But um, man, it's just, it's expensive. Like Google, uh, like right now I'm running a Google keyword, like a leads campaign it's called. And basically they charge you for like when someone actually clicks on the ad, but I mean, I don't know what the hell goes on with Google because, like, if they don't deliver in like two days, it, you know, like a two dollar click turns into like a thirty dollar click when someone clicks finally clicks on it. It's like, you know, they don't give a shit; they just want their money. So it's like, oh, we didn't deliver in two days. Fuck it, we'll still charge you for like, you know, a premium on top. So it's rough, you know, to start, especially when you're not getting that type of income in first to run it because yeah. some of these companies, uh, these other poopers pooper companies, you know, they're spending. A thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month on uh, advertising, and I just don't have that type of cash right now. You know, I would, I would try once, just do pick out one zip code number, maybe two. That's exactly it. Yeah, and I would do a money mailer or a Val pack, uh, you know, and just try it. Because oh yeah, leave it up. People, did... people still check the mailboxes. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually did uh, look into that, Howie. So there's a there's a thing. If anyone is a small business out there and like listening to this, there's a thing from the U.S. Post Office. It's called EDDM, um, Every Door Direct Mailer. I think it's what it stands for. E -D -D and basically, that you could create um, you create a little mailer or whatever with your promo on it, and then you pay. You can go onto the USPS website and literally pick routes in whatever area that you want to deliver these mailers to. And that's pretty affordable. I mean, you know, you could hit like 300 houses for like 60, 70 bucks plus whatever it costs for you to print those mailers. That's perfect for you. Yeah. So it's really not bad to get, you know, to get in a mailbox. The thing is you just got to make sure that you design something that someone's not going to just literally go eh, and throw it right in the garbage, you know? So, so how do you figure that out? Uh, I guess that's where like marketing comes into play, you know, um, I'm trying, I don't know, throw some weird word on there or something, you know, if I just put like poop or something in really huge letters, someone might stop to look at it, you know? <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be a good idea. Just like have like a chick in a bikini picking up dog shit or something. I don't something know. weird. Yeah. The weirder, the better. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think, uh, in the area you're in, I think you're onto something, man. So, what are your plans for the next year? Like, where? What do you? What are you hoping to do? Do you have like a a, a playbook that you're going to run? A plan on expansion? And how many customers have you gotten? And what's been the feedback so far? Well, you know, I'm still new, right? So, I just started the business not too long ago. I got my first client finally uh, this past week. So it was like yeah! a milestone, yeah, to get there, which is awesome. Um, and I, you know, I was able to pitch the guy for so the way like my business works is I charge an initial cleaning fee before I sign someone up for like reoccurring service. So I hit them with the that fee and then I gave them a discount if they signed up on the spot for like a month to lock in. So now I got them for at least a month and I'm hoping that they continue to stay after that. So we'll see, because then after that, they'll be profitable. But basically it's get my first customer, which I just got, get five customers, then 10, then 20, yeah. 40, yeah. 60, and just keep going from there. And how am I going to do that? You know, reinvesting the money that I'm getting from these weekly customers uh, into advertising. I'm pretty much not going to make any money up front, but I mean, that's, you know, that's how most businesses go when they start. So I get it. You know, you got to spend money to make money. So, but yeah, advertising and just bootstrapping everything really, you know, I'm a one man team. I built the website, do all the design, logo, branding, 
go out there, actually service stuff, sell it, you know. That's amazing. That's that's great. And what has been uh, your significant other's reaction to you being <laughs> a professional dog pooper picker upper? I mean, she was a little skeptical, I guess, at first, but you know, same thing. When you when I explained kind of what it was and then showed proof of concept, then uh it kind of clicked and it made sense. So I mean she's supportive of everything I do, which is great. Um, so I can't complain there. Plus, you know, as long as I'm still working my regular job, bringing in the, the money, you know, to pay the bills, then we're good. So yeah, Zoltan's got a cool chick. She benches like 322. Oh, really? You guys just lifting together? Yeah, we just lift each other. That's it. That's great. That's fucking great. That's love, Johnny. You and your fake girlfriend should try that. Um, Thank you. Zoltan, you've been a follower of the Cash Daddies for a very long time. You're, you've are you been a big part of helping us get a lot of our, uh, our, our artwork done and stuff like that. Uh, is there what What is your thoughts on investing right now? Uh, are you investing? You know, you and I were getting into some crypto for a while. What's your thoughts on that? How do you see the, uh, 2023 going? Oh, man. I mean, everyone's talking about recession and tough times and rocky times in 2023. So we'll see. I mean, uh, I know across the board, a lot of these tech companies and stuff have been laying off a lot of people. I think what Amazon laid off like 18,000 people just recently. Yeah. So, I mean, that sucks, you know. So I'd imagine uh, probably some more layoffs here and there throughout the year. But, um, you know, like how he says, I mean, there's money to be made if you're paying attention, you know. Yeah. Uh, me personally, I'm investing in myself right now, you know. So starting this business and putting my money into there, um, obviously, I mean, that's an investment because I'm hoping that's going to pay off and then grow and uh, bring me profit. So, I mean, that's what I'm, pro I'm focusing mostly on this year. So the extra cash that uh, I am getting from that's going right back into the business, nothing else. Plus last year at the end of the, the middle of the year, I bought a house. So I took, you know, my stock profits from there and I invested into real estate. So, I mean, that's also taking up money because I got a shit ton of stuff to still do with this house. Pretty much have no furniture in the house. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I got other priorities uh, this year, me personally, than really be uh, spending extra money on investment. But that being said, I'm still investing my 401k company matches. So why not take advantage of that? I bumped up another percentage point this year because market's down. So yeah. you know, <laughs> might as well make up all the loss that we've had, you know, from the past year or half a year. Um, not investing in any crypto. I mean, I still hold a whole bunch of crypto, like through multiple different wallets and stuff. I really want to consolidate, but I'm also afraid to touch stuff just because, man, I don't know. One, I'm definitely a believer uh, on hopium. So I'm hoping that, you know, my Sh Shiba Inu is going to come flying back. Come on, day. dude. I believe. <laughs> I believe. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get yeah, so I'm still holding you. a bunch of that stuff. Uh, I got a ton of Cardano. You been know, up a little on... bit. It's been up a little bit, Shibu Inu. A little tiny. A little still bit. Up, but a little still... bit. Johnny, <laughs> shut up. I mean, Let listen, I'm dream. still up. Hey, I, hey I'm, I'm, you got me into it too, dude. I, I would love for it to go up. It's up a little bit. Yeah, a tiny, tiny, yeah. tiny bit. Yeah. yeah, I still <laughs> hold Bitcoin. I still have Ethereum. Um, you know, I still have a bunch of Cardano. Uh, that I just started staking, actually, which I didn't realize how good the staking rewards are on Cardano. Uh, and has like pretty much no risk to it. So it's a nice like four or 5% that I'm getting, which is good on my Cardano over there from a couple of projects I did last year. How long you stake for? Uh, it's whenever. It's not like a set. It's not like Hex or whatever, where, you know, you're locked into something. It's, it's You're not even really staking. It's called delegating. Will you never see it again? Just run, helping run a node. What's that? Were you hex like when you stake it? And I looked at a guy's thing today, and this blew my mind. He's got these chicks working for him that you can tell they probably can't spell their name, and they're just they just tweet out stuff like, "How long are we gonna hold hex?" And some guy screenshotted, he's got to hold it for eleven years. Oh, so it's like, dude, eleven years. So that's kind of like what's this know, baseball man. contracts? 
That's like me hooking up with a chick and like, you know, you know, and she bites me in 11 years. I turn into a vampire. I don't fucking I can't I can't even wrap my head around. Uh, nah, it's brilliant. Anything. It's brilliant. I mean, I, I'm sure Madoff wishes he thought of that. Like, you know, yeah, I should have for just sure, made them hold their money. For sure. for I mean, years. it is for, as far as a Ponzi scheme. It is brilliant because, yeah. Can you imagine if you told people, look, thanks for that hundred grand in 11 years, it's going to be 70 billion. I mean, you can tell them anything. <laughs> It's good. Hey, believe it or not, it's going to be one trillion. Oh, yeah. You're going to be a trillionaire. I mean, fucking these people, they'll believe it. So, yeah, I saw that 11 years. This guy is it just blows my mind. Blows my mind. Zoltan. Zoltan, what do you think of big news came out on, you know, they're, they're making waves with this FTX scandal. I think they're trying, they're actually finding out who, you know, how Bankman was, was screwing people and how far back he started. Uh, but they're, they're gaining, they've actually recovered, you know, some of the cash, but you know, I was talking to a few people today, uh, Adam, who was on the show last week, and they all think that this FTX scandal, uh, in exposing people is actually going to help regulate Bitcoin. What do you think? Oh, man. I mean, I mean, yeah, it probably will help regulate Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. Is that a good thing? I don't know. I mean, any government regulation, I mean, man, you know, could be questionable depending on what it is. Yeah, they'll Um, find a way to fuck it up. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I do think that that guy uh, from FTX, I mean, you know, he definitely... uh, he was a con man, you know, 100%. And uh, same thing with his girlfriend or whatever. I'm surprised they haven't talked more about her. I guess she just, like, you know, basically spilled the beans on everything and was willing to, like, yeah, you know? Oh, she, yeah, she's one of those These women who has a way ain't of loyal, bro. Yeah. These hoes ain't loyal. Um, So we're, we're going to let you go here. But real, I got qu- two questions for you. One's about being the new house homeowner. And the one I ask right now is, Howie has no problem with investing in evil. He loves to invest in evil. <laughs> if the Death Star looked like it was going to have a good week, Howie would tell all Howie's homies to uh, buy Death Star. Uh, do you ever, you and I align a lot in some of our conversations, if you don't mind me saying that. Um, do, and we can edit that out if you don't want that in there, but um, do does that ever come into play when you're investing? Man, uh, for the most part, no. I'm with Howie on this. Uh, money is money, you know, and money yeah. doesn't give a shit about yeah. any of that stuff. So, uh, I mean, you know, I, I listen. You could use it to your advantage, right? I, I exchanged a whole bunch of profits from Vanguard uh, to buy a house. So, what were they going to do? They were going to screw me anyway, right? To be a renter, so might as well cash out and make make my money, you know. Yeah, Vanguard, <laughs> Vanguard helped World Zoltan buy his house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. And how is being a new homeowner in these crazy times? Do you have any regrets on buying a house during this crazy time? Are you very happy? Man, uh, yeah, no, I, no, I don't have regret regrets, but I will say that like everything is just so much more money than it actually needs to be uh like like construction material uh you know wood for example like i had to put up a fence i had to do like molding in the house and stuff and you know the price of pine for example for like molding three times the amount of what it should normally be so you end up having to buy like this mdf crap like this like like this manufactured, like basically cardboard shit. But that's what all these contractors are buying because it's, you know, three times cheaper than the actual pine. And pine used to be cheap. Same thing with the fence. I spent like 15 grand on a fence, you know, in wood, which is crazy uh, to think that it would cost that much for a real basic fence, you know, but everything's just super expensive. Uh, But no, I don't have regrets because you know, when we were looking at houses, um, did I overpay for the house? Yeah, definitely, because I bought it kind of at the height of, you know, when the market was hot. But at the same token, I locked in at a pretty reasonable interest rate for what it was. So realistically, now my purchasing power would have been shit if I would have waited. So I wouldn't have been able to buy the same house or I would have had to have bought a house maybe like for 200 grand less, uh, which would have really been kind of tough and probably not a good investment. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I mean, just looking at the houses, like it was a solid house. So even though I paid probably a little bit more than I should have, and it ate into my like rehab budget, um, doesn't matter. You know, I'm, it's not like I'm flipping the house in a year. I plan on staying here for a while. So I'm going to make my money plus some uh, just by sticking around, especially if shit keeps going the way it goes. Man, you're looking at a lot of people renting for a long fucking time, you know? And you got a big house too. That's a good size house. Yeah, yeah, it's a decent, you know, same thing, just thinking ahead, you know, if I want to stay here, good school district, I got enough room, want to have kids and stuff like that, like, it, it could happen, you know. <laughs> well, Zoltan, we love you, you're a big part of uh, what we do, we appreciate your hard work, your your, your amazing artwork, and uh, thank you for being in, we're super happy for you, your business, uh, anything we'd ever do to support don't hesitate to ask and uh congrats on everything good luck with your bit your dog shit business thank you buddy yes yes pleasure i always love working on all this stuff for you sam so it's always a fun okay, time we love you dude thanks and we'll listen, listen, listen if anyone is listening to this and they are in uh new jersey in monmouth county www.doggydude.com d-o-o-d.com hit me up i'm looking for customers how far are you from the racetrack, Zoltan? What, the horse track? Yeah. Close. Really close. <laughs> Monmouth, baby. The ponies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I plan on hitting that up. <laughs> That's a great track. One of the oldest in the country. That's what I hear. All right, All right bud. You're the best. Congrats. Keep us uh, posted, and we look forward to uh, talking to you again. Thanks so much, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks, You're guys. the best, bud. Thank you, Zoltan. That was great. That was a great interview. Again, Zoltan, big part of Cash Daddies, uh, my Zero podcast. Um, you know, he's made all the artwork. And if you want to see more of his artwork and everything he's got going on, go check out his Instagram at the art of getting up. The, the art of getting up. All that will be in the description. So support Zoltan. He's a part of the family. Great interview. So let's get into it. All right, Howie, uh, you want to hit us with your, your pick for this week the, for the regular yeah. uh, episode? Pick right now, heading out. No ifs, ands, or buts. I absolutely love it. It's an ETF. It's called UNG. That's United States Natural Gas. Uh, it's down from like 21. I bought it at 11.15. Uh, it actually went to 12.30. I didn't sell it. went back to 11. But UNG... Uh, natural gas, it's literally trading at a year low. Um, you know, we've had a warm winter. There's a couple other things involved, but it's trading right now at 11.55, and I think it's going to pop back to 15 quickly. Like it a lot. Right on. All right. That's all I got. I was going to do this. I, 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 there's this funny story about how the price of eggs has doubled this year, because they're, and they don't know why, really. They're thinking about maybe like the bird flu. The price of what? It's called, the price of eggs. It's uh, it was a dollar seventy last year, and now eggs are at four dollars twenty five cents. Isn't that? Oh, yeah. dude, you know what's going around, bro? Chickens have so. Okay, I can ask this real quick. Chickens haven't been laying eggs, so people are like, "Why are my chickens laying eggs?" And then someone started telling people, "Change your feed from this corporate feed to this feed," and the chickens started laying eggs again. Huh. So that so where were they get? I wonder what company was selling them the shit feed. That's huge. Yeah, to, we gotta get into that. But let's sure go over. Guys. Let's hey guys, won't you join us over there on the Patreon? Patreon.com slash cash daddies. Come get weird. We'll see you over there. Thank you guys for your support. If you listen to the show and you want to see me live, just go to samtribly.com. I am going to be in Phoenix, Arizona this weekend. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm with Johnny Mitchell, Jake Gallo. And then the following weekend, we got Tim Full Hat shows in Long Beach on Thursday, the 26th, and Bakersfield on the 28th. Come get weird. Howie, any dates? Oh, I got busy weekend. I'm heading up north, uh, hanging out with my favorite sister-in-law. Going to a, uh, got some important stuff to do while everybody's at a baby shower. It's going to be big. <laughs> All right. Well, have, enjoy it. Enjoy. Guys, talk to you soon. See ya on the Patreon.